produce more spin. But that may be a direct result of the materials that are used in the, um, the shaft, because it may have a high concentration of fiberglass in it, or be a weak tip. So it's somewhat hard to isolate it, but you can see differences among the shafts. That's what the launch monitors are intended to do, is to uh, see what those differences are when you have someone with a repeatable swing. All right, Patrick asks, again, if I, if I frequency match unstepped shafts, how do you recommend doing it? All the same frequency? Uh, if they're different lengths, uh, no. Do, go by what the manufacturer suggests as far as the, the trimming, um, because there's, there's a rhyme and reason why they normally do that. It's not to say that that's the best method, because I do know people that have played flatline frequency clubs, and they do work, but I also know a lot of people that have and couldn't stand it. And unless you go out and test, because you may have a demo club, let's say it's a six iron. Well, you may only have a six iron to demo in, in a real world situation where, you know, you had all the time in the world and all the money in the world, you might even test like a, a three and a nine and um, see where they are. And, and you may find that someone needs a flat line or a real steep frequency slope. Um, but most people are never going to go to that much time and effort. So just I, I would base it on the, uh, the manufacturer's trimming and then do your sorting. We actually had a webinar late last year that you might even refer back to that that will uh, um, show some of what we, what we do there. Here's my favorite question from William. Is buying a more expensive shaft better than a cheaper one? Uh, I mean, that's, that's one of the better questions that you're going to get because you expect when you pay more, you should get more. Um, you know, if we're talking about someone with a real slow swing speed, it, it actually it could be the worst thing because a lot of the material cost is to get the shaft either lighter or maybe a lower uh, torque, or there's more different plies. I know for myself that a lot of these more expensive shafts, while I can't quantify some of it, what I might see is more uh, repeatability. You might see a little bit more accuracy or tighter shot dispersion. Um, it may change because of the layups, you may see some small nuances in, uh, in launch conditions, maybe higher launch or lower launch, whatever it might be, um, with you know lower spin. And that might help to um, give some people, not all, um, better launch conditions for uh, more distance. So just because it costs more doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be a better shaft. But I think the, the people that are going to probably see the biggest difference are the people with the faster swing speeds. So is there any truth anymore to the old adage, stiff for hookers and soft for slicers? Uh, <laughs> in general terms, if you have someone that, that slices the ball and you give them a a stiff shaft, chances are they're still going to slice the ball, but it may not slice as much. Um, or I mean, a, a softer shaft may, um, let me think, uh, hold on one second. The answer to your question is not always. It's one of the situations I always joke about, that two wrongs squared plus another wrong could make a right. Uh, you may get a situation where you have a shaft that's too stiff for a person, um, which may, you know, your thought is maybe the, the ball flight's going to have a tendency to stay, to be a push or a fade. But if the club face has a center of gravity location that just happens to be more toward the heel or further back or the club face is more closed, those two things may work in harmony. Uh, so I, I always look at it as a system. Hope that answered your question. 
Okay, using this data, how would you identify a low launch, mid, and high launch shaft? Um, I normally look at the uh, TB ratio as an indicator. Now, at first, you have to look at shafts that are of the same uh, DSFI range. But like on this last uh, picture, or last slide that I have here, um, the Serana would probably be the one that's going to have the lowest launch conditions. But again, remember what I said sometimes that uh, a golfer that may uh, push or slice may need a softer tip. That person that gets this shaft may find, in certain cases, it may not keep the ball down because the face, because the shaft may not be able to close and be blocked. It'll end up with a um, um, with a push shot or with the face open, and that's normally going to uh, translate into a higher ball flight. I know that when I go to the higher number clubs, I seem to play better. Should I consider this for fitting customers as well? Um, if you're asking, like, um, what club to fit with, um, remember, the higher the, the loft, um, the easier it's going to be to hit, not just because of the loft, although that'll have some help because you, you're, it's going to negate some of the uh, side spin, but they're also shorter length clubs. I think most manufacturers, um, they've opted, it used to be five irons that people fit with for, um, for at least for the, in the irons. Now it's sixes and uh, sevens, but I definitely wouldn't go to anything shorter than that because it won't magnify any mistakes unless you're looking just to sell more clubs. I think you, that you're better off going to a little bit longer club where you could start seeing the if there's going to be an issue. Just a few more left here, Jeff. Do you feel that shafts are manufactured with enough consistency that we can rely on the ratings from your measurements, or should we be taking the time to frequency match each club versus following trimming instructions? Uh, I think that... I mean, the granted, there's going to be tolerances. I try the best I can to get a representative sample of what the manufacturer uh, is putting out. Over, and I, I've gotten softer at my old age, and I've come to the conclusion that you, it, for most people, you have to go beyond what that simple tolerance range would be from one shaft to another. Um, before you start seeing like the ill effects, like if if the shaft on this page, the, they're all like 83 to 85 DSFI range. Let's say it was a little off. If that maybe if that person was swinging like 110 or 60, something that was way outside what they should be using the shaft uh, will have an effect. Um, but Anytime that you're, you're, you're sorting and so forth, that's a good thing because you're narrowing down tolerances uh, ahead of time. Does shaft puring really help? Uh, I really can't get into that because of patents, but um, if you've got a golfer that's swinging outside in, you know, 12 degrees with a, you know, six degree open face one time and then the next time, um, you know, the, the numbers change quite a bit. I don't care what you do to that shaft. You could soak it in holy water and pray that it, you know, the ball goes straight, and it's probably not going to help a whole lot. All right, last question. Well, two more le left, Jeff. If you remove a shaft, if you remove or add a shaft dampener, will it affect how the shaft reacts? Um... The ones that are out there are probably not because they're they're flexible. They add very little weight, and they don't really do any stiffening properties from within the shaft. So, uh, unless it was like a solid piece of something where it, it now changed the deflection of the shaft or how it would um, deflect, then the answer would probably be no. Last question from James. I may have missed this, but how do you calculate DSFI for a shaft that Hariko may not sell? Uh, you don't. 